Dr. Zach Watkins. It's February and I want to wish you a Happy Heart Month, Happy Heart Awareness Month. And so this is the month that, you know, the American Heart Association dedicates for, uh, to educate others and to educate the population about heart health uh, in general, heart healthy diets, heart health prevention. And so I want to do that for you. So over the next few days, I want to send you uh, some videos that go into more detail about heart awareness and particularly more about evaluation and are we doing what we can to truly investigate and uncover are we truly doing what we can to you know be preventative and are we looking at the right testing measures to be preventative and that's that's for me that's pretty important because you know in my office from a functional medicine perspective uh, we, we treat each person as an individual and as, as, a, as a whole person. And looking at a blood panel and looking at nutrition panels and trying to determine the health of someone, you know, what, I, what lays heavy with me is, you know, their, their cardiovascular uh, blood testing. So the typical blood testing that we go through is, um, you know, things like this that I wrote out. So we get cholesterol taken. We get our good cholesterol taken and our, we look at our bad cholesterol, and we look at our triglycerides. Um, that's pretty much the panel that is, is done through most offices. And so when I, when I reflect on this and say, well, what am, what am I doing as a clinician that can serve you the best that I know how from a nutritional perspective? I'm not a cardiologist or a medical doctor. I don't, I don't um, we don't you know, prescribe based off cardiovascular uh, disease and those kind of things, but I feel it's my duty to share with you if there's more ways you can be preventive, preventative for heart disease, um, cardiovascular disease, stroke, and those kind of things. So first and foremost, actually before I mention about the labs, I want to mention some statistics that I came across when I started diving into it more um, that I wanted to share with you that I don't think a lot of people know about, and they're they're shocking to me. Uh, it's not really shocking. It's not a big surprise, but it just shows me that still how cardiovascular disease is still is the number one killer in America uh, to this day with all the medical advances and medications, uh, all the fancy diets that are out there and how we eliminated fats from our diet in the 50s and stuff like that. We still struggle with cardiovascular disease and it's still the number one killer out there. So I want to share some t statistics with you uh, regarding heart disease and cardiovascular disease. So these statistics come from uh, the American Heart Association, American Stroke Association, and the Centers for Disease Control. So about 600,000 people die of heart disease every year, which come to be about one in every four deaths. Heart disease is the leading cause of death for both men and women. In 2009, more than half of the deaths due to heart disease were in males. Coronary heart disease is the most common type of heart disease, killing more than 385,000 people per year. And every year, about 715,000 Americans have a heart attack. Of these, 525,000 are a first-time heart attack, and 190 of these happen in people who have already had a heart attack. This was shocking to me right here, actually. Coronary heart disease alone costs the United States $109 billion, with a B, billion dollars each year. And this includes the cost of health care services, uh, medications, ER visits, hospital visits, and uh, even lost productivity at work. Now what about strokes? 795,000 Americans each year suffer a new or recurrent stroke. Recurrent stroke. So that means, on average, a stroke occurs about every 40 seconds. Stroke kills more than 135,000 people a year, and that's about one out of every 18 deaths. Actually, it's the number four cause, cause of death. So on average, every four minutes, someone is dying of a stroke. About 40% of stroke deaths occur in males, and 60% of those in females. That's interesting, because I think the reason why it could be elevated in females is possibly their obviously family history, but even birth control use. I know that's a big risk factor for females. So Americans, going, to call, going on the money thing here, Americans paid about $74 billion in 2010 for stroke-related medical costs and disability. So these statistics aren't 
particularly comforting and exciting. Um, it doesn't make my heart want to leap with joy. So are we doing something wrong? Are we missing something? Uh, why is this still the number one killer? And why, why, why do we hear these, these horrible statistics uh, th this day, uh, these days? So again, my, my question when I sit and think about this is, well, we know our typical blood panel from a prevention standpoint, when we go into our office to a, you know, get a physical or maybe our work does um, heart, you know, healthy days where we get blood panels done and things like that. Well, we're getting our cholesterol, um, our good cholesterol, our bad cholesterol, and our, and our blood fats. So triglycerides. Um, you know, to be honest, sometimes when I ask people for labs to bring in from the office for me to look at, they only have their cholesterol done. And to me, this is a huge, huge, huge disservice. Um, research, there was one article that I, pre, I re recently read that individuals that had normal, there's a, there a population that they looked at, of these individuals that had normal cholesterol, actually 40% of them were at extremely high risk of heart disease. And obviously there's other factors like smoking and alcohol intake, family history, um, diet, and uh, so there's all those modifiable factors, but you know, what, to me, this is just incomplete, and I know a lot of people would agree with me that this is very incomplete if we're truly trying to get to the heart of the matter of um, heart disease prevention. And are there better ways to investigate heart disease, and are we at a higher risk than we really know? I know you would want to know that. I've talked to many patients about this. They've even asked me. My levels are fine, so I must be healthy. I, I highly disagree with that because it's not telling you the whole story. It's not pulling back the curtain to reveal the possibility of more uh, trouble that's brewing around the corner. And again, I'm not a cardiologist um, or a medical doctor, but um, from a nutritional perspective and looking at normal physiology, there are other options out there that expand um, or expound upon this basic panel that I honestly believe you should be checking. If you have a history of heart disease, uh, if you are overweight, if you have diabetes, um, if you smoke or have a history of smoking and heavy alcohol use, and um, I, you really need to think about diving further into, am I truly uh, protected? Am I truly not at risk? And are there things that are being missed? So one of the next, uh, one of the next kind of sp the special uh, for, uh, one of the next specials for the next video is, excuse me, is what I want to do is reveal to you some of these lab tests that I believe that everyone who's at risk needs to be talking to their primary care provider about requesting, uh, do more research on to say, hey, I want some of these labs done because I truly do want to be preventative in my cardiovascular risk. And I believe that basic cholesterol and good cholesterol or bad cholesterol are incomplete. And I hope to show those to you, and I hope to explain those a little bit more, and I hope that you'll take action with those too. So happy Heart Month. Until next time, um, eat well for your heart, not a lot of chocolate, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.